This iPad Pro update isn't as massive as ones we've seen in the past. The form factor is the same, and for a lot of people, there isn't a new must-have feature. But I do feel it's important to talk about a few things. The camera system received the biggest upgrade, and for most people, including me at first, didn't get it. Why would this be the best thing Apple could add to an iPad Pro update? I thought about it, and after watching some of the early reviews, I realized this is definitely the best device for somebody starting off in a creative field. With the new camera array, this iPad is a lot closer to the iPhone 11. It has both a wide and ultra wide angle lens. Personally, I would have taken the telephoto lens over the ultra wide lens. I think a 50 millimeter lens is way more useful. But with these, if somebody wanted to get into video, they could start off with just this device. They could use an app like Filmic Pro to get really great control over what and how they film. You can then switch between wide and ultra wide lenses, giving you different perspectives for a final product. Then move those video files over to an app like LumaFusion and edit your work. This isn't the workflow of a big Hollywood film, but it's a great place to get started making stuff for a site like YouTube. For photography, you can use an app like Obscura and take raw photos with your iPad. Then you can edit them in apps like Lightroom, Pixelmator, or Darkroom. Or even get in deeper and edit with Photoshop or Affinity Photo. I did some product shots I will show here. These were shot using the Obscura camera app in a raw format. Here are some before shots and here are some after shots I edited in Lightroom on the iPad. I do think the iPhone does take better photos and videos, so if you have a modern iPhone, I would stick with that for photography and videography. But if this is your one device, this is a great place to get started. LiDAR is the next hardware edition. I like lasers that map the surfaces as much as the next person, but there really isn't anything exciting to say about this. It's pretty clear Apple is releasing this now because they have some software feature planned for the future. For right now, ARKit developers can update their app to take advantage of this new sensor. It makes their app experience even better. But let's all be honest for a moment. How many AR apps do you use on a daily or even weekly basis? For me, it's none. And one of my jobs is to talk about apps on the iPhone and the iPad. So until Apple releases whatever software it's supposed to go along with this, it's kind of useless. If somebody does have an app that's taking advantage of the LiDAR sensor, please email me or let me know in the comments. Apple also added what they are calling studio quality microphones to the iPad Pro. While I won't be recording VO or a podcast anytime soon on them, I was impressed how much better they sounded than the 2018 model. I put some samples together for you to listen. These include the 2018 and the 2020 iPad Pro and a Shure SM7B. The Shure SM7B is a mic used in a lot of studios for some voice work. This is a test of the 2018 iPad Pro microphone. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is a test of the 2020 iPad Pro microphone. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is a test of the Shure SM7B. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Between the camera upgrades, the microphone, seeing what developers can do with the LiDAR sensor in the future, and everything else that's come over from the 2018 iPad Pro, I'm convinced this is the best computer for anyone in a creative field. Especially if you are just starting off and only can afford one device. Of course, as your projects grow, your needs will change, and so will your gear. So if you upgrade to a new camera, you can take that SD card, plug it in, and get the files via the Files app. If you want a better mic for audio, podcasting, music, whatever, you can take that and plug it into an app like Ferrite to record. If you would like a bigger screen, you can plug into an external monitor as well. Federico Vitici over on Mac Stories has talked about this idea of the iPad being modular, meaning you can add what you need and take off what you don't. I love that idea. But not everything is all upsides. Until now, any new top of the line iPad seemed like it was guaranteed to get a major speed bump. And as somebody who edits videos, photos, and podcasts on an iPad, I appreciated that. I even said in the past I would upgrade my iPad even if the only thing it gets is a faster processor. With the 2020 iPad Pros, this changes. Instead of getting a fancy new X processor, we are getting the A12Z. 
This has the same eight core CPU as the previous 2018 iPad Pro, but it adds one more GPU core, which brings that up to eight. A few people online have done some digging and it looks like it's honestly just the A12X processor from 2018 with a, the extra GPU activated. The A12X processor did ship with an eight core GPU, but one of them was deactivated. Apple did mention to some of the early reviewers that they improved the thermos, meaning it can run at a higher clock speed for longer, which is probably why they were able to activate the eighth GPU core. This will probably be a benefit for those that do high intensity tasks like rendering video. There isn't a lot of these kind of tasks to do on the iPad right now, so most people probably won't even benefit from it, but I'll take it. The 2018 one terabyte model had six gigs of RAM, while the rest of them only had four. This is the biggest change speed-wise. Now all models have six gigs of RAM. This will be a huge help for anyone that does any kind of editing or heavy lifting on the iPad or people that just jump between a lot of apps all day long. I will say I'm slightly disappointed we didn't get an A13X processor. The improvements in the iPhone 11 were so big, I was excited to see what Apple's chip team could do. I try not to talk about software too much when doing iPad hardware reviews. These are two separate things that usually come out at different times. I did a big walkthrough of all the features in iPad OS 13 that I will link to in the description. And of course I'll be doing one for iPad OS 14 as well in the future. But these new iPads are shipping with iPad OS 13.4 and that enables a major feature, mouse and trackpad support. This is no longer just an accessibility feature, and I will add it's not exclusive to the 2020 iPad Pros. Any iPad that can run iPadOS 13.4 can use this feature. It's a very good implementation. It doesn't bolt on the Mac's cursor, but they rethought it for touch and gesture environments. I did a full walkthrough of everything you can do with it already that I'll link in the description. The piece that I'm most excited about is the new Magic Keyboard for the iPad. Unfortunately, this won't be shipping until May, but I can't wait to try it out. It has a built-in trackpad and a redesigned keyboard, plus the iPad floats. There's a lot of questions about how well this will work and I'm eager to try it out and see when I get one. The price tag on this though is enough to make anyone's eyes glaze over. It's $300 for the 11 inch model and $350 for the 12.9 inch. I'll be getting one to use a review, but I'm not super thrilled about that price tag. If for some reason you have upgraded from the 2018 iPad Pro to the 2020 iPad Pro, your accessories should just keep working. The Apple Pencil is the same, so no change there. And the Smart Keyboard Folio for the 2018 model sort of works on the 2020. The camera bump does get in the way of it sitting flush, but the Smart Connector does connect and you can type on it. The only thing that it covers is the LiDAR sensor. In fact, I've typed this entire script for this video on it. I personally didn't want to spend $200 while waiting for the Magic Keyboard to come out, so I'll just be using this until May. Other accessories like the Bridge Keyboard should just work fine. You just won't be able to use the back cover. If it has a hard shell case or won't work around the camera bump, then it won't fit the new one. Now the question I have been hearing a lot, should I get the new one? If you have an older iPad Pro, one of the ones with the home button, then yes, this is a great upgrade. You'll get all the upgrades I talked about, plus the great stuff from the 2018 models as well. If you are looking to get your first iPad Pro, now is a great time to jump in. If you have a 2018 model, I would skip this one, unless you're doing some heavy AR development. There just isn't enough new here, but that's okay. It's fine to have a minor revision every once in a while. But you're thinking, Chris, you had the 2018 iPad Pro and you bought the 2021, but you're telling me not to do that. You're correct. When I bought the 2018 model, the one terabyte version was extremely expensive and I couldn't afford it at the time. I've come to really regret that and I'm constantly running out of storage space between videos, photos, and podcast projects. So I did buy the one terabyte model and I'm pretty happy with it. This frees up my 2018 model to be my iPad OS 14 testing device so I can run it through its paces and make a killer walkthrough video. Now there is a rumor we may see another iPad Pro update this year with upgraded display, processor, and 5G. This is just a rumor and with everything going on in the world, I wouldn't be surprised if this gets pushed back a few months. Just keep that all in mind when you're making your purchasing decision. 
If you do decide to get one, get one with as much storage as you can possibly afford. It's better to have too much than not enough. For screen size, if you want to make it your main computer, I recommend getting the 12.9 inch model. If you want to make this your secondary computer or some sort of travel or portable computer, go for the 11 inch. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will try and get to them. Thank you for watching and have a great day.